So, you know, we, we talked about it, and uh, and, and the, the, the end of it was that it is, he thought that it was probably good enough because there's going to be very little traffic on it, and the water, there's almost no slope, and it's just going to gradually ease its way across the road and then down into the brook. And my argument was, yeah, but I want to get it across the road farther from the brook than where it's going to cross now. Mm -hmm. And I think what the, the, you know, so we went back and forth on that for a while, and then he started talking about the agricultural use, and this is so much better, and then he pointed to the road and the other area and said, I don't know who's farming that. And then I looked and I said, yeah, right, you got this farm road that cuts right across where that water is coming over. And so basically, if this keeps flooding along there, and they keep driving through it to access the agricultural land, it's going to become a muddy mess. Mm -hmm. So I said, I really want you to do what, see if there's any way you can cross this water across the road up farther uh, to the north. So we agreed on this plan. One is, let's see what happens for a while. And I said, yeah, I mean, I was curious to see how it would handle a good, decent storm. But with this area in drought, who knows how long it's going to take for us to see wet enough conditions to be a good test. Did you see it after that storm? What was that? Yeah, there's nothing. It was like ground just sucked it right up. Uh, um, and he said that next top opportunity he has, if he's got somebody in the area, is going to send them over to shoot grades. He said, if there's enough of a grade that I can route the water and it will move, then it sounds like it could be viable to cross the water up farther north, cross the road with it. So we don't have a, a resolution yet, except that we're not going to issue a certificate of compliance. And it gives us time just to keep an eye on it and see what kind of ponding occurs. Now that they've raised the road a little bit, it's going to change something. We can also keep an eye on the farm road to see if it's turning into a quagmire. And then hopefully Tony will arrange to get the elevation shot so that we have an idea of whether there's a reasonable grade for us to try to something some type of alternative to that. So that's my report back from that site visit, which means we're not going to take any action on this certificate now, but if you have any feedback, feel free. Thanks, I drive by it every day. I can keep an eye on it. So. All right, good. So it's been clear what we wanted when we did the sidewalk out there months ago. Okay, we'll I know. Right around. Yeah, and Tony said, I don't know how I got this wrong, but I remembered it totally differently. And he just said, I don't know how you got it wrong either. But, <laughs> um, you know, he's, he's a nice guy. He's willing to be flexible when he can. And so I, I guess I trust him to honestly evaluate whether there are options. But we'll have to come back to him and, and push him on that and see. But, you know, let's see. It's great that you drive by it often enough, and any of us see anything of concern, just let me know, you know, let the rest of the commission know, and we'll take a look. So the third item on the agenda. Are we done? Look, you have this expression on your face, George, like there's more you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> Not about that. Not about that, okay. Um, you know, the Wake the Open Space and Recreation Plan is in draft form, but it's pretty much final to be submitted to DCR. And along with that submittal, there's usually letters from the relevant boards endorsing the plan. Uh, so I sent you the plan. It's a pretty lengthy one, so I'm sure you didn't read it all. But, um, okay. Well, I was on the committee and I read pretty much all of the chapters, at least in draft forms. And so, you know, I submitted my comments about changes. I assume that those were made or many of them were made. And I think that the uh, action plan is reasonable. It's always a question of whether anything will actually happen because the town has no resources to speak of and all the same people are on all the committees. So there's really not Isn't it a lot of extra people. Doesn't it help us apply for grants and stuff if we have? Have that yeah, right. We have to have an open space plan in place to be eligible for certain grants. And so it's a good thing to have a plan. And I'm hopeful that some of the things on the action plan will actually be done. It's just hard in a small town to get enough people 
you know, to actually take the action. It was what, like about 80 people actually took the survey, right? Was I was looking at 82. that. 82. 82, yeah. It was pretty small. So. Right. And, you know, you can and tell. people came to the public hearing. Mm -hmm. yeah. And you can tell by the answers to the questions that we didn't get a, a good cross section of the whole I still like the one, fill it in, make a dirt track. Do you, do you see that comment? Someone yeah. wrote, fill in man-made. I want to make a dirt track out of it. It was one of the comments. I was like, fill in man-made? Yeah. Tritown, yeah. Oh, Tritown, yeah. Yeah, I call it man-made, sorry, yeah. <laughs> yeah, fall, yeah, fill it in, it's a, it's a garbage heap, make a dirt track. I was like. That was, yeah, the, the one thing people were most dissatisfied about. And, I mean, I'm sure... The rec commission must be frustrated because there's nothing you can do about it. There's mm -hmm. no well, there's were no you at town meeting? No. Oh, Jonathan Edwards wants to turn it into a um, a destination, with a restaurant, and a tennis court. <laughs> yeah, he wants. He's, yeah, he's gonna like yeah all these CPA funds. We're gonna clean up the pond. It's like I'm like oh. Yeah, I mean, there's just not enough flow through. No, no, it's just the basic. Yeah, it's the. Backfill dug out of for ninety one and it just the springs they hit so it just filled with water. <laughs> and then it's exposed to the sun. Yeah. It heats up. And then the farmers take the irrigation off the back and then Yeah. So anyway, if is anybody opposed to us sending a letter of support? Because I'd be happy yeah, to do that. I read about half of it and it's very thorough. I was really impressed. And yeah. then I realized how long it was and I just had to impressed. <laughs> All right. So yeah. everybody's okay with yeah. Yeah, that's fine, yeah. Right. yeah. Thank you. Um, I noticed one typo. Oh, in the that, minutes? No, in no, the, no, in the in the um, OSRP. Okay. It was that uh, it said the center school was constructed in 1975. I know that. That must be the elementary school. It's, it's on that, page that, 23 that, in that the was, second. Elementary section. was later than that. Are they, are they talking about the one up on the hill? No, yeah, that it was the center, center school. school. Center, oh. No, it's just a typo. Maybe, yeah. Center of town. Yeah. So, do you so want me to communicate this to someone? Yeah. I'll just send, if you could send me an email, I'll forward okay. it when I forward the letter. Sure. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Something My mother-in-law went to first grade, so oh. she's nine, almost 91. It was built in 1910. Yeah, I, yeah, I, like, I went to school there. Uh, I was actually a kid. Did you? Yeah. But, you know, it, this is completely understandable, but, you know, the FERCOG and a lot of the background information just cuts and pastes from other towns. So mm -hmm. some of their paragraphs had Conway instead of Waitley in it. <laughs> it's just like, it's, it's still true, but change it to Waitley in this case. So it's possible I'm, I'm that it was a cut and paste issue. There are other types. Well, I think that the other one was like, it was Tri Town and like trail systems or, tra you know, trails or bike routes and stuff like that. That's so why I saw it was the two main, two main right, topics. Right. Yeah. Well, it was really interesting, so I recommend reading it. <laughs> but if you look at the survey, you know, the number of people who indicated that they hunted was really, really small. That's not right, yeah. And I said, so basically the hunters didn't fill out the survey. Yeah. So yeah. the fact that certain things like the Tritown Beach and the trails ranked high, there may be other things that are valued that didn't rank so high in the survey, but we didn't get a good... Mm. Yeah, if I like I said, yeah, you look at it, it's eighty people, like that's not a good survey. You get, yeah, your your data is just not good. All right. Um, minutes. I brought copies in case you didn't get a chance to read them. No, good. Yeah. All right. All in favor of accepting the minutes? Aye. All right. Um. Oh, and by the way, all in favor of continuing the hearing? Today? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so we're at updates and other business. There was no mail to, in the box, so I don't really have much for updates. Do I have any, any sign-off issues? But there, there is one sign-off issue that I guess I'll just make you aware of. Is, uh, is Skip Goodrich has that plant for making concrete box products. Oh, the USI there, yeah. And uh, he wants to put up another building. Uh, when he put up the current building, we uh, we basically judged the stream that runs by there to be intermittent because the orchard trailers had demonstrated that it was intermittent when they did their permitting. Mm -hmm. And so I thought, if it's intermittent, it's intermittent. It doesn't matter if it's the next property over or not. Uh, but DEP's uh, approach is, is that, you know, 
determinations of applicability and orders of conditions expire after three years. So our determination that it's intermittent also expires. <laughs> and situations can change. You know, it could be that there was a you know, a diversion that we didn't know about that was diverting water and now it's not. Uh, or it could be that precipitation has changed. Or it could be that if you're a little bit downstream, if there was a confluence with another tributary, and therefore it's, it maybe it was intermittent there, but it's not intermittent next door. So based on that, you know, for this uh, sovereign builders, we decided we have to start back with the presumption that it's perennial. And so I told Skip that we have to do the same for him. And that, you know, his building was going to be within the 200 feet. And he said, well, yeah, I thought it was 50 feet. I said, well, yeah, it used to be. <laughs> um, so he's looking into alternatives. You know, I went out and talked to him on the site. He was pretty reasonable about the whole thing. But uh, I just thought I'd let you know that that's just one of those discussions that happens offline. No. Uh, it has to do with our jurisdiction and me sort of adopting a DDP approach because I have a feeling we'll get a appeal that we didn't. Mm -hmm. And that's such a flux, like you said, a flux area with the beavers and all the swamp, you know, it is a very variable area. So. Yeah, and, and the thing is, is right now they can't demonstrate that it's intermittent because it's a drought. Mm -hmm. So they have to wait till the drought ends and then find a drought area when it's not running. So, uh, you know, it's it's challenging, but, you know, we didn't write the rules. We just have to enforce them or apply them. I guess is a better way to say it. Anybody else have any updates or other business? We have no mail, so I guess we're done. Okay. I can go back and look. Just, just remind me. Did we finish with John Hadden up there for those two months? Uh, yeah, we did. Oh, yeah. Oh, the one came back so many times. I don't get. Oh, that one, yeah. We'll see. Was between, yeah, between those two, yeah, I couldn't remember which one. Yeah, we did find the issue of the, uh, the, the order of conditions, and they're still negotiating the natural heritage pieces uh, for, for that. Mm -hmm. So I think he said Emily Stockman was going to do the conservation management permit for the rare species. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there may, they may actually, you know, end up turning over some of the land in the state. It's hard to tell, but so it's not ready to build yet, but it's beyond us, you know. So we've done our business. I thought we were talking about the valve. Uh, oh, yeah, that one came up. Oh, um, we got to do a site visit on it, don't we? Uh, well, what it was is they, 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 they came to me, but it was past the deadline when they could get on the agenda for tonight. Okay. So it's a July. Yeah, it's a July one. Uh, but I, um, you know, I wrote to them. Yeah, I don't know how much of this I shared with you. But I wrote to them and said that the Mill River is a meandering, low gradient system stream, so you have to use indicators of high water, of bankful indicators rather than the top of the bank. Mm -hmm. And so they said, yes, okay, we understand that. And then, uh, the other issue was uh, being concerned that they might not re realize that cannabis production was not exempt under the Weapons Protection Act. So I ended up calling up Brian Nelson and I just said, you do know this, don't you? And he said, yeah, yeah, we know that. And, he's, and I think all most of the work is going to be in buildings or in like greenhouses or something. Yeah, so I think I it's think just mostly reef. Almost the footprint of where the buildings are now, I thought it looked like. But. Yeah, so I, I don't think they were really thinking about outdoor cultivation like it was mm -hmm. on River Road where we came into that. But mm -hmm. I wanted to head off the misunderstanding, so I made the phone call to make sure that they understood mm -hmm. you know, that we had already gone through this question about cannabis and it's whether it was exempt and, and wanted to let them know what our decision was. They didn't seem bothered by it, like they were already planning on that. so. Yeah, because there was the river front, and there was what, boarding wetlands or something on the backside too. There was a wetland right, area. Right, like yeah. an old uh, backwater mm -hmm. there that's wet. But my guess is that probably floods every year, mm -hmm. and so that's where some of the high water will extend to, and then the riverfront area starts there, rather mm -hmm. than at the banks of the, of the river. Just 
general question with the open space plan, Scott. How would we actually, could we or get river access to the Connecticut River through Whaley? I mean, could we actually open up access in the town somehow? It was talked about a fair amount because there's a lot of interest in getting access mm -hmm. to the river. I know that was the yeah, admiral that was one. Yeah, I was looking at that. My assessment is it's not practical because the banks are really steep and the uh, the, the river bottom is really undesirable. I mean, from what I've seen from kayaking along it, mm -hmm. it's all very silty and very mucky, and it's not it's not going to be a very appealing place. So, what's the point of like creating this whole stairway down and mm -hmm. you know, a parking area or whatever else if nobody wants to go there? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I didn't even think about the bank with all the yeah the clay and the, the you know it drops up and down. Yeah, that'd be a Challenge. Yeah, I mean, the, the Connecticut is a really interesting river. There are some places, mm -hmm. like a, right around the Hatfield uh, boat mm -hmm. launching area, right across from it, there's this big sandy bluff, and people love to go there. And there's sturgeon down that way, too. Oh, yeah. And a little farther up, there's the Fashion Road uh, DCR property, and there's actually pretty nice access there where you can actually get in and swim and get out, and it's not all mud. Mm -hmm. But most of the river is pretty muddy and mm. mucky, and uh, unless you go out on the, the cobble bars, it, it's not very mm -hmm. much fun to be. Mm -hmm. Has anything come around about the uh, river road uh, outdoor cultivation expanding on, onto AI's property? Uh, is that? Um, is that three River Road? It was seven was the one oh, that seven, we looked at. Yeah, yeah. But is AI three? Uh, yeah. Because yeah. I did see, we did, there was a site plan that came to us. Nobody's, basically, some, a site plan review plan for three River Road that I think is a planning board issue right now. Okay. But nothing to come to the Conservation Commission, but I can send you that. I haven't done anything with it, but the, uh, but I got an email about it and haven't taken time to look yeah, that's at it. Three. That's yeah, that'll probably be on our horizon too. Good evening. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what they have to sell it, the shop there in the front or something. <laughs> yeah, I remember I had a conversation with somebody and they were, we were talking about conservation commission business and they asked the question, so what kind of projects are you getting? You know, what are you seeing in Waitley? Mm -hmm. It's like of self storage facilities and cannabis production and solar <laughs> farms. <laughs> and those, are, those are the things that we get. And they thought it was pretty entertaining that cannabis and solar farms are such a big deal in Whiteley. Mm. All right, I'm going to shut down the uh, the recording and we can all go home.